Welcome to the City National Grove in Anaheim. I'm Ron Roberson. As the city's first responders gather here to pay tribute to the memory of the victims of 9-11, we are reminded that 9-11 has become not only a day of remembrance, but also a day of service. Today, numerous nonprofit and community organizations have gathered here to provide attendees and you at home an opportunity to get involved and to give back. Okay, I'm with Elsa from Anaheim Fire, and Elsa, this is a great event, and I really love what you've done out here in front. Tell us what's going on out here today. Sure, this element of the program is a service fair. We have 40 nonprofits represented here, and we are encouraging residents to take action and be involved and give back to their community. Volunteerism is really the seed that makes our communities flourish, and so there are plenty of opportunities for uh, participation in, in volunteering for the community. I mean, we know we got a great program going on inside, but this has generated a lot of interest out here as well. And that's kind of a way to deal with things, but 9-11 can be very depressing. Right. And I guess the best way to overcome that is to go out and volunteer. Right. Well, 9-11 has been declared National Day of Service. So this is a component and um, offering opportunities and knowing it's as simple as preparing a care package or taking information about fallen firefighters. The key is find something that touches your heart and give back. Yeah. Now, who do you have represented out here? I know it's several, but um, I know Habitat for Humanity is here, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But you have a few others as well. Yeah, we have Disney volunteers. We have Pause for Cause, um, which pairs up military veterans with animals, with service animals to help with the transition from combat. Um, we have National Fallen Firefighters, as I previously mentioned, and an array of other opportunities to, to give back. Now what about Anaheim Fire? Are there any volunteer opportunities there? Absolutely. We have Fire Service Day coming up on October 1st. And yeah, we, we encourage people to go to the North Nut Training Center and learn more how they can give back through the fire department. Okay, we're here with the I Love Anaheim group and very special people. And sir, tell us exactly what is I Love Anaheim? Well, I Love Anaheim is Anaheim's version of I Love My City, which was started in Modesto a couple decades ago. And really it's an opportunity for people to come out. Uh, we have four events a year and they can go to our website at uh, loveanaheim.org and sign up for a project. And uh, we have captains for those projects already set up. and. Uh, we do many things in the in the city. We paint trash cans. We pick up litter. We uh, just uh, did a veterans uh, facility yesterday. We uh, put a concrete walkway in there, and uh, we just do many many different things for the for the city and try to create a community out of Anaheim. Now, who can volunteer? Are there any age limits or anything of that nature? There are age limits. Uh, we allow uh, children to volunteer as long as they have a guardian or adult with them that will sign their waiver that allows them to participate. So the age limit is only determined by whether an adult will help you or not. So we have kids down as young as three years old helping out. Now, again, you're looking for a lot of manual type help too, but um, does it run the gamut of the type of people you're looking for? Absolutely. Even today on our table, we have uh, cards that uh, will be sent to police officers, fire, uh, fire department, and uh, even, even the brass at the fire department, just thanking them for their services and what they do. So uh, it's writing, it's physical labor, it's encouragement, it's building baskets for homeless people and, and uh, ladies coming out of the uh, traf human trafficking. I want to volunteer. Uh, what's my first move? What is the first thing I need to do? Visit loveanaheim.org and there's a listing of all of the events that we'll be doing and you just choose an event, sign up, tells you how many volunteer spots are available so if you have three or four friends you want to bring along with you you're welcome to do that. It's a great way to meet new people, it's a great way to give back to your community. Jackie, what are you doing out here today? So Alzheimer's Orange County, we've been here since 1982. We provide free programs and services for those struggling with memory loss. 
And one of the really cool things about our organization is all of our programs and services are offered at no charge to our families. And we raise our own funds for that. So we're not publicly funded, it's all through donations. Now what type of volunteers are you looking for? So we expect close to 11,000 walkers at our Walk for Owls. So we need as many volunteers as we can at our Anaheim Walk, whether it's somebody to help set up or just cheerleaders to help us along the walk route. Um, we just need people out there to rally behind the cause. Okay, one of my favorites is Habitat for Humanity. Why? Because I volunteer for them myself. What a great organization doing great works in all of our communities. Ladies, if you would, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here today. Thank you for having us. Today we're here to talk about our different volunteer opportunities at Habitat OC. There's a lot of different things you can do between working on the construction sites, volunteering at our restores, helping out at hospitality, or even just providing lunches for our volunteers. There's so many ways that you can get involved. Now, what does one have to be qualified or kind of specially or with some kind of speciality or anything? Uh, how does one uh, become a volunteer? Well, there's no experience necessary to volunteer at Habitat. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities for people that are 16 and older in construction and restore, but even if you're younger, we have a lot of youth opportunities as well with providing lunches and um, writing thank you cards for our veterans. And uh, so give us your information, uh, how do we get a hold of you, and uh, first step, I'm, I'm, of course I've done it before, but for someone who's new, what's my first step? Well, the best way to find out additional information is to visit our website, and that's habitatoc.org. You can find all of our information about our program, different volunteer opportunities, and just ways to get involved. We have a monthly volunteer orientation. It's not mandatory to attend, but it's just a great way to get some additional information, and you can also sign up for Chefs Online. Okay, we're with the Patriotic Service Dog Foundation, and uh, this gentleman here is going to tell us what they're all about. Very unique organization, doing some great things for our servicemen. Sir, uh, tell us uh, all about your organization. All right, well, we're, we are the uh, Patriotic Service Dog Foundation, and we train and provide service dogs for our wounded veterans, primarily with PTSD, uh, TBI, and mobility. Mm -hmm. And um, let's talk about your dogs. You have a beautiful animal here. Let's talk about some of the, the dogs that you use and the services that they perform. Okay. We train, again, for PTSD a lot, and what we train the dogs to do is stand and, and block. So people with PTSD don't like somebody really up close to them and talking, so they want a little distance. Mm -hmm. So it creates a buffer. The dog will stand and block. Okay, they will, he will, Charlie, stand. He'll support me, yes. so it's called stand and brace. So I'll yeah. tell him brace, and I could go down and use him to support uh -huh. me. He'll go up and down stairs with me that way. Charlie, block. Okay, so now he's just created a buffer for somebody that if they were in front of me, yeah. try to heal. Come on. That a boy, down. Good, okay, so those are some of the things. Also, interrupt is a really big one. Uh, if somebody's having a flashback or a nightmare, the dog will come and interrupt them. So mm -hmm. depending on the signal the person has, a lot of it is putting their hands over their face like they're struggling. Yeah. Others will wrench their hands, get frustrated. Yeah. Okay, the dog will come over and interrupt them and bring it back to the present. It's really cool. Um, also, turn on lights. So if they're having a nightmare in the, in the middle of the night, uh, flashback, the dog will flip on the light and then interrupt them so they wake up in the light. How do you select your dogs? We temperament test them. If we start with a puppy, we usually start at eight weeks of age and we test them and evaluate them. And so far we've done a good job doing that because we're 100% successful on our, our, we haven't had one washout. <laughs> now tell us about uh, the volunteers that you're looking for. What kind, who can volunteer with you? Well, we have some uh, really good volunteers already, but we are always welcome more. Uh, we've had one young girl that's a senior in high school now, her name is Kiana, and she started uh, three years ago. So she's been great about coming out for three years. So it is fun, he wants out of the sun. Oh, okay. Down. It doesn't require any special skills to come and help out? Or? Well, obviously liking dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's always good. Uh, so liking dogs and, and being punctual, you know, we, we're pretty strict about that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's, it's really a lot of fun. 
So anybody that is interested in volunteering or puppy raising, that's something that we really, really need mm -hmm. to become a puppy raiser. Uh, that's huge, so that's really fun and rewarding. Raise a puppy up and then give it off to a, a veteran in need. Yeah, here's another great organization doing some good in Orange County and surrounding areas, and especially Anaheim. And sir, uh, tell us exactly what exactly you all do. So what we do is we help at-risk youth succeed in life and reach their full potential by matching them up with mentors that can help them reach whatever goal they, that they have, whether it's a young man or a young woman that wants to go to college, find something positive in their life past high school, help them graduate high school, or just find that outlet where somebody can help them understand how to navigate life. Now, you're looking for volunteers as mentors, and uh, exactly how does one volunteer and what kind of skills do they need to bring to the table? So we're looking for men and women, regular men and women that are just willing to help at-risk youth achieve their full potential. We're looking for volunteers above the age of 18, um, if they've graduated high school, just have a good job, or if they just want to give back, and they're in a solid place in their life where they can be consistent for a child at least one year, because that one year creates a relationship that will continue over and over again um, for the remainder. Some of our matches have been together two, three years. Some have been together 10 years. Um, myself, I'm a big brother. I've been matched for two years with an amazing young man, and he's changed my life just as much as I think I've changed his. Okay, we're with DSA OC, and uh, you all have a beautiful display here today, and smiling, and people are coming by asking about your organizations. Tell us exactly what you do. So we're the Down Syndrome Association of Orange County, and we assist individuals with Down Syndrome and their families. And what are some of the things we can expect when we come uh, to your organization, and what kind of services do you provide? Um, we're really a place of connection and resources for families, but we're we want to be connected with the rest of the community as well. So we're a place of hope, a place of information, and a place for family to really form. Now you're looking for volunteers, and how does one become a volunteer? Uh, they would go through me first, <laughs> <laughs> or they would email our admin, um, admin at dsaoc.org, if they want to get a volunteer application. It's also on our website, dsaoc.org. And what kind of, are there any special skills that I need to bring to the table to volunteer? No, we take all ages, all ability levels. Um, Parth here is actually one of our self-advocate volunteers, and he's also a participant in our program. So, yeah. And Parth, what exactly do you do? I do, I, I'm an actor, uh -huh. and I'm on TV, and uh, I was born, I was born this way in our FX. So, we, and, yes, <laughs> and I was an intern in the Ocean County, in the hood, so yes. Do you enjoy yourself, Don? Yes, I do, yes. All right. And sir, what exactly do you do? I'm um, a uh, Vietnamese healthcare outreach at uh, Down Syndrome Association of Orange County. Uh, Alicia, you know, my wonderful supervisor right here, she recruited me and I was uh, thankful about that. And then you could be anywhere on a Sunday. You could be across the street over at the Angel Game having a good time. Why are you here? Uh, you know, just, you know, I just want to, you know, you know, go out there, you know, try to like, you know, give as much as I can, you know, try to get back to the communities like they were able to give back for me, you know, just trying to like, you know, help, help everybody out. Awesome. And, and, and that's what volunteerism is all about, helping other people and getting involved, huh? Yep, it's a place for connection. Yeah. How can we get a hold of you? Um, that would be our website, www.dsaoc.org. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have yeah. a good one. Yeah. As you can see, there's great work being done here in Anaheim, and these folks could really use your help. Thank you for joining us and for supporting our great community.